Hi everyone, Nikos Bafidis from Sunny Cyprus again, and today I'm solving another paper, a practical paper for the IGCSE 0417 examination. I'm going to be working on paper three. In fact, it's the June 2021 paper three one. It's a two and a half hour assessment, and I'm going to be solving the entire paper, making this video just a little bit long. However, if you jump to the descriptions below, you're gonna find timestamps, so you can jump to the section that you're interested in most, or if you want to watch the entire video, by all means do. Now, if you like this video, if you find it useful, you want to stay up to date with any new videos that I create, by all means like, and of course subscribe, and let's get started. Okay, so the first step is, let's have a look at our paper. So I'm gonna scroll down, go to the first part, and here it says, you've been supplied with the following source files. So ideally, you should have all these source files inside a folder, all the files inside one folder like I have here. I've got all my source files inside this folder here. I'm just going to zoom that in a bit more. And these are all my source files. Okay. Now, next part. It says create. Now, remember, it's very, very important when you're reading these parts, when you're reading these exam papers, that you read the entire section because sometimes something that you're going to read three, four lines down is going to affect what you're doing now. So just to get a better understanding of uh, a mental image of what it is that you're going to be doing before you actually do it is a very, very big help. So, create the new word process document. Make sure your name, center number, and candidate number will appear on every page of this document. Save this evidence document in your work area as, so here it's got the name, I'm just gonna copy that um, with the underscore, followed by your center number, uh, candidate number, for example, this example here. You will need your evidence document. So this is the first part. This is task one. This is uh, complete. So I might as well just go ahead and do this now. So from here, I'm just going to right click new Word document. And I'm going to call that with the name it just gave me. Make sure I don't have a space at the beginning. Yes, I did. And J evidence. And I want my um, center number CY127 and my candidate number underscore one two three four five I don't have a candidate number so there we go I'm going to open these I'm going to put my details in the in the header it didn't tell me where exactly to put my details so I can just put them anywhere I want and logically I'm just going to go for the header left, uh, left aligned one, two, three, four, five. Double click here. Okay, and I'm just going to keep that open and minimize at the bottom. I'm going to be coming backwards and forwards to this. Okay, let's go to the second part. Now, I'm going to read this carefully. You're going to create a web page and style sheet for Bally Holiday Homes. The web page and style sheet must work in any browser. All color codes except those provided in the source files must be in hexadecimal. So that's my first one, hexadecimal. Right. Make sure that your style sheet contains no HTML. Make your HTML and style sheet as efficient as possible. So this basically really means when we're going to be doing the CSS uh, code, we want to use efficient, pro efficient programming techniques. Create a new folder called BHH. Locate the following files and store them in your BHH folder. Display the contents of the BHH folder showing the folder name, all the file names and file extensions. Um, image dimensions and file sizes. So we want to do this piece now. So that's the entire section there. So let's go to my folder. I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to call this BHH. Enter. I'm going to zoom out so I can make this just easier to select my files as a list. And I'm going to select all the files it told me to use so that's going to be all of these and is that it let's just have a look i think that's what i'm just going to drag these in my bhh folder um, i also need that one there the logo just going to do a quick count i need the text as well okay Everything in there, yep. So I'm just going to do a oh, control X and put that in there as well. So I'm just going to count how many files. Okay, replace that. I'm going to count how many files I've got. So I've got in here 10 items. And if I have a look 
here I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten items. Perfect. So I need to go and take a screenshot of this, showing the dimensions and the file names. I think the best one is going to be always content. Uh, the reason why, because the content view always gives you the dimensions of the pictures as well. Um, I can see my extensions and um, I can see my file name at the top. I'm just going to collapse my explorer tree here. They don't need to see the other files that I've got. And I'm going to take a quick screenshot of that. So here's my snipping tool. And I'm just going to take a screenshot, making sure that here I can see the file name, PHH, and these are the contents and everything there. So I'm just going to go now to my here. That's evidence one. And just paste that there. There you go. Now, again, I'm using dark mode. Please don't use dark mode. It doesn't print well. I just forgot to go change the settings on my computer again. So do not use dark mode. Okay, uh, let's move on so that I can get rid of that and minimize that. Next part. So I've done I've done uh, section one. Let's go to section two. So here is where I want to read my paper just a little bit more carefully. I want to read all of this section two here just to get a good understanding. In fact, I'm going to go through all of this so I can get a good idea of what it is that I have to do. So create in your BHH folder a web page called this. The web page must be created using single table and must work in all browsers. The table must fit 80% of the browser window. The table must have a structure as shown in the diagram. In fact, what I'm going to do, I'm going to create this structure first. So let's do that. I'm going to go to here. Now, we use Dreamweaver. Um, but obviously, you don't have to use Dreamweaver, whatever software that you're using. Uh, but my video is going to be focused on what I use with my students. So this is going to be Dreamweaver. I'm going to create a new file, new HTML file. And straight away, what I'm going to do, I'm going to save this in the folder where I have all my other files. This is absolutely vital. So straight away, file save as. Go to the folder, that one there, PHH. And I'm going to call this BHH.html. BHH.htm. Okay, and there we go. There, there's my uh, file name. And it's in the folder where um, all the other files are and that's absolutely crucial i'm going to click inside here so it places my insertion point in the body tag down here and i'm going to go to insert table and i'm going to create a table here which is going to be five columns we can see it one two three four five and four rows so five columns oh, so four rows five columns the table width is 80%. We need to make sure this is correct. Now, I don't know anything about borders. Let's go have a look and see what it says about borders. Um, each table cell is identified with a letter. Some dimensions are shown. These must be set as percentage values and not pixels. That's really important. The cell contents shown in the diagram must not appear in your final web page. Table borders must not appear. Now, I'm going to leave my borders for now in fact let's just let's just go back let's just remove the borders i'm just going to go to put that to borders to zero i usually leave them and work on them at the end but you may forget so let's just get rid of that for now you get the dotted or the ant lines here showing you where the cells are so that's okay so next step is i'm going to create my uh, table to look like this so the first five columns are merged then the last column is merged down here, and I've got three merged cells down here for K. Okay, so I'm just going to do that quickly. So I'm going to select these cells here. Now, a number of ways you can merge. You can either just right click, and then you can go to your table and merge. Merge cells. I'm going to select these ones now. I'm going to use the merge cell button down here in the corner. It's just easier for me. And then I'm going to merge these three cells here. Now, notice I haven't done anything with the sizing yet. I've just created the structure. Okay, so let's go back to the paper. Now, I need to set these dimensions here as percentages. So, so the first one is this cell here. I'm just going to bring that like this. Okay, I'm going to click on this cell, and that's going to highlight in the code area over here uh, the, the TD for this division here. 
Now, I want to add the height. Now, the easiest way, if you can't remember the code, if I just adjust the height of this cell just manually, just a little bit, it's going to automatically, you can see here, it's now giving me a height here. Okay, now I can just simply change that value from 52 to whatever it says, 20% you have to put that percentage sign. Now you can put the percentage sign in quotes or out of quotes, it makes no difference, so that's good. Now it only said 20% high, so I'm not going to put anything for the width. I'm only going to change what it tells me. So the next ones, it's got here, uh, the B is going to be 20% width, 20% height, and the rest of these I'm only adjusting the width. So I'm going to change that to 20% there, Okay, now uh, this one here, it only wants the width to be 20%. So I'm going to change that to 20. And I'm just going to get rid of, if I had the height here as well, I would get rid of it. I don't need the height because it doesn't ask for it. It's going to take the height from that first uh, TD anyway. And we can see here 20, 20, that's correct. Now this one here, it wants to be 40%. So I can either just copy the width here or I can just simply type it in after the TD. I don't want to mess around with playing with the width, it might adjust everything else. So I'm just going to type width equals to, I'm going to put this in quotes because the rest are in quotes as well, 40% and close the quotes. Okay, and that's it. Set the title of the web page to that. So I'm just going to get rid of my highlights so I can copy that. Set the name of the default target window to underscore self. Now this is a new one, and, and you know many many students don't um, know or haven't been taught. Um, and even if you have, trying to set this here is um, something that you'd have to recall and remember. But remember, this is only one mark, so don't waste any time on this if if you just can't remember the code. So let's go and do this this part here first. The title. So my title here, we can see in my code up here, here's the title already. And it says untitled document. So I'm just going to delete that and just put the title it tells me. Because it's going to be the title for this page. There it is there. Now for the underscore self to for the target, the command is actually a tag. It's called it's the base tag, and we're going to put target equals, and we're going to put on uh, speech marks. So speech marks underscore self. Okay, and then we just close that chevron there. Okay, so that's essentially the code. Okay, and as I said, if you can't remember that, that's just a mark. Don't sweat about it too much. Okay, let's go back to the question paper. Right, place in cell. Now, here's where we're going to start adding some images. It doesn't say anything about alternative text for the images. And I just want to read this section down here until it changes so it comes out of the section of pictures so i'm going to be placing these pictures in the cells then it says place inline style at attributes into the html so that each image so this to do with the image again fits the width of the table cell now this is important because it means i'm only concerned about putting the picture to fit the width of the table cell and the aspect ratio is maintained Add appropriate alternative or alternate text to all images. Okay. Place in cell G the text compact, in H larger, uh, secluded, and with a view. Apply H2 to all this text. Place in K, right. So this is not part of the text because K is down here, a part of the images. So let's begin with this. Now, the really important thing when you're adding images in a web page is do not try to adjust the images just to make them fit and make it look good. Just add all your images, follow the commands, and it, it should end up looking okay. So let's begin. In A, I'm going to put the logo. So I'm going to click inside here. I know where A is because I've got the letters here. There they are. So let's go up to our paper. So in A, I'm going to click in that cell there, and I want J2131 logo. So I'm just going to go to insert image. And because I've got my page saved in the same folder, I can see it brings everything up straight away. 
J213 logo, there it is there. And look at that, that is massive. Now here's where students start panicking now. They say, wow, what's happened? And they start adjusting the size of that image to make it look small. Leave it there. Let's just add everything else. So in B, I want J2131, BHH1. So I'm just gonna scroll uh, down here. This is B, I think it's the other cell. Just have a look. So it actually goes to, right, B, C, D, E, and F, okay. So in B, I'm going to want to add BBH1. Insert image BBH1. That's another massive picture. I'm going to scroll to the right to go to C. So this is going to be the one next to it. Click in here. Insert image. That's going to be BBH2. This one here. Insert image BBH3. This one is going to be insert image BBH4. And then the last one, it says it's going to be the jungle one. That's the one with the merged cells across the roses. Insert image, the jungle picture here. Okay, and we can see that. That is just scary. That the, the pictures are so big here, I can't see anything on my table. But don't panic. Let's just move on and see how this uh, works out. So I've added the pictures and I haven't modified them. Then it says place inline style at attributes into the HTML so that each image fits the width of the width of the table cell. So that's where I'm going to do this. So I'm going to go back to my paper here. I'm going to show you how you're going to do this very easily. So here is my first row at the top. This is where my logo is. And if I just scroll all the way to the top and I click inside here, you can see it selects that picture. So here's my first row here. We said that the height is 20%. Now, what I want to do, I want to make here where it's got the image, I want the width of this image to fit the entire contents or the area of that cell. So, I'm going to get rid of the height. I don't care about the height because I want the height to be adjusted automatically so that the aspect ratio is maintained. I'm going to click on the width and I'm going to change that to 100%. Now, 100% means get the picture to take 100% of the size of that containing TD. So if the TD is this big, it's going to stretch it and make the picture this big wide. If it's this big, then it's going to make the width of that picture 100% of that TD, making it so wide. Next one. I'm going to do this for all my pictures because it said do this for all the pictures and adjust the width. So that's going to be 100%. And get rid of the height and the same here and get rid of the like that a hundred percent and here hundred percent get rid of the height a bit tedious but take your time if, especially if you know what you're doing make sure you get it right you don't want to lose marks for this um, you just want to make sure you do this right first time round otherwise you'll have to do most of it all over again so now that I've done that and I put my pictures when I go back to my design view over here it should now when I click over it look at that wow can you see that automatically my pictures have adjusted to the size of of those cells, the width of those cells. And if I change the size of a cell or the table like this, have a look. If I make the window, which is the width of this window here, bigger or smaller, you're gonna see, can you see how my web page changes? If I make it smaller, you can see that the pictures are automatically adjusted. The table adjusts to 80% of the window width. The TDs, those cells adjust to 20% of the table and the pictures take 100% of the width of the TD. And that's what this is all about. Okay, let's go down to our question paper. So that worked out really well. Um, add appropriate alternate text to all images. Now, this looks a bit confusing because it's kind of hard to figure out what these are, but if we read 
Okay, if we read, so if you have a look at these pictures here, I'm trying to understand what these are here, um, is a little bit tricky. So let's just read ahead. And it says here, place in cell G text compact. Okay, so that kind of makes sense. Um, so I'm just going to paste that there. And then in the other one, it wants larger. Don't worry if things start changing around. Just be patient with it. And then you want here scheduled, uh, sorry, uh, secluded. And then with a view. Uh, just make sure you put small letters, capital letters as a display. And apply style H2 to all this text. So I'm just going to select all this text and go down here where it says format and put it to h2 now i'm going to say that these are labels for the uh, the pictures here so for the alternative text for this one that looks like a house there so i'm just going to go down to the alternate text at the bottom and i'm going to say compact house remember these are uh, bali holiday homes so you could say compact house or compact home I'm going to click on this picture. I'm going to say this is a larger house. This is going to be a secluded house. And this one is view from a window. From a window. And I'm just going to say, I don't know, this is like a jungle picture, a uh, picture. Uh, uh, since the name of the file, or since the name of this image was jungle, um, I'm just going to say, uh, I don't know, picture of a jungle. Picture of jungle in Bali. Okay. So let's just move on. We're on number nine now place in cell k the contents of j2132 text okay apply paragraph style to this text so let's go here we're going to go to i'm just going to open my my files j2131 text i'm going to select that to open it it's open here Control a Control c and then i'm going to go back click inside k here and press Control v and there's my text there and you can see i've got that extra enter down here i'm just going to press backspace take that out it's not needed you won't lose marks but just to make it look neat apply the paragraph style so i'm just going to select all of that and i'm going to put the format to p paragraph okay um that's that enter in cell l the text last edited by okay so go back in here I'm going to put that and then it says on the new line uh, place your name center number and candidate number uh, so I'm just going to press uh, shift and enter here that gives me a soft break it doesn't really say whether it's a hard break or soft break uh, it says a new line it doesn't say a new paragraph now the difference is this if I press just enter and we look at our code here it gives me a P okay so if I just select that let me just click here and press enter now you can see that's going to give me a new paragraph undo if i simply hold the shift and enter that's going to give me down here a break okay so i'm still within the same paragraph i'm simply putting it on the next line so from here i'm just going to type my name all right where are we so shift and enter one two seven one two three four five so there are my details and then it says on the new line below this enter the text so i'm going to press shift and enter again um actually it's got it like a title so i'm just going to press break i don't think it really matters but we'll have a look at the mark sheet. i'll press shift and enter for now and it wants me to write contact bhhh so let's do that contact bhhh okay now since this is off another line i'm just gonna I, i'm gonna prefer to press a break there so i'm gonna press delete bring that back up and then press enter to make it a new line or new paragraph okay uh, apply style 3 to all text in cell l so i'm just gonna select all that and i'm going to give 
H3 to that. So I haven't done this paper before, so you can, oh, I've put an extra H there. Uh, you can see I'm going through the thought process that students will go through, you know, decide, am I putting a soft break? Am I putting a normal break, uh, um, a paragraph break? I'm just making it look the way I think it looks uh, more decent, but following the instructions there. Okay, uh, create a hyperlink from the text contact to open the web page. So we want to open this web page here. So that's in our folder in a new browser window called underscore blank. Okay, so I'm going to select this text. I'm going to go down to my link down here. I'm going to click on the folder and I want J21321 contact. This one here. Okay, and for the target, I'm going to put underscore blank. And that's that. So let's now go down here, attach the style sheet. Uh, J2131 BHH to this web page. So I'm going to go over here. Now I, I attach the style sheet this way. Other people got different ways. This is the way that I show. Um, just click on the class down here at the bottom, attach a style sheet, browse, and find the style sheet. So the style sheet is going to be this one here. And click OK. OK, automatically we can see that the text has probably been changed to white font, which is why it's not visible here now. That's due to the properties which have been set in this CSS style sheet. So let's move on. OK, it says open and edit the style sheet, this one here, the one that we just applied to meet the following specifications. So let's just read through this very quickly. First of all, we need to set the background for the web page so that it uh, has a color with uh, blue, red and green components. So we need to do the red component first. Uh, then the green and then the blue. So that's going to be a hexadecimal number of 212F36. Remember, always red, green, then blue. Set the background for the web page so that the image. So we're also adding an image in the background as well. And it's placed uh, only the top left corner of the window. So that basically means it's not going to repeat and it needs to be on the top left. Set the font styles H1, H2, and H3, and the paragraph style, so that's going to be the P style, okay, so that the browser selects and displays the font. San Francisco, if this is not available, then the browser selects and displays the font Calibri, and if these neither of these are available, then it's going to select the font, the default font, the sans serif font. Okay, so that's going to be a part of the font styles. Set the paragraph style so that the text is fully justified with a 12 point font. So we need fully justified 12 point for the paragraph. It's going to be the P, uh, the P tag. Write a line. Ah, that's interesting. Write a line or tables in the browser. Well, that makes sense, doesn't it? Because if we're putting this picture up here in the top left corner and the table's on the top left corner as well, it's going to be on top of it. So they want the table to come on the, on the right side and that picture, the background picture on the left. Okay, um, just quickly read through the rest of this. Add your name center number as a comment, uh, candidate number as a comment under the star sheet. Okay. Um, all color codes must be displayed in hexadecimal. Right, noted. Make sure that your star sheet contains no HTML or scripting language. Save this star sheet uh, in your BHH folder. Take a screenshot, a screenshot, not copy paste the text, a screenshot to show the file name and all the contents of your star sheet. Okay, so I'm going to do all of this now in uh, step by step. So the first thing is I'm going to open up my style sheet. So I'm just going to go to file, open. And here's my style sheet. And I've got this open now. So, and then it wants me to set the background color with those components that we saw. In fact, um, I can just take a screenshot of this and just bring that as an overlay here. So we've got a copy of that just coming and going uh, easily here okay so let me just adjust that there and I'll adjust the size of this window as well as yeah, it doesn't really make a difference there we go okay so we can see everything that's really going on now okay so I'm going to go here I'm going to click on my uh, selectors so I'm in the CSS designer here we've got selectors I'm going to add a select and I want to add the body tag press enter and enter there's my body tag and I want to now go in the category section here um, so I could just find it quickly for the background. 
I'm going to change the background color and I'm going to set that color. Don't remove that hashtag because that actually means it's a hexadecimal number. So the red component is 21, the green is 2F and the blue is 36. I'm going to press enter. Now, whenever you make a change, it's always good to see that change being applied to your web page. So I'm just going to do control S to save. I'm going to go to my web page here and you can see that the color has already changed. In fact, I, the way I prefer viewing these things, I'm going to open my HTML file and view it in the browser. So every time I do something, I'm just going to refresh it. Let's just have a look. Has that been saved? Nope. I just, you see, I haven't saved that yet. So, uh, so save the web page as well. Control S. And now when I go to here, I should be able to see my page with, there we go. Okay, and that's what I'm going to be reviewing. And every time I make a change, I'm going to refresh this page. Okay, so the next part is going back to CSS set the background for the web page so that the image do 2131BG is placed only at the top left corner. So, again, while I'm in the body tag here, I'm going to go again to my background. Here, I'm going to go to where it says background image, click on the folder, and I'm going to find the file that ends in BG this one here double click on that and that added the picture now i'm going to click here where it's got the background repeat to no repeat okay because i only want it to be placed in fact why don't i get rid of that so you can just see what that looks like if i don't do that Control s to save let's go have a look here when i refresh this you can see it's repeating that image um, horizontally and vertically so let's just go and remove that so from my image here, background, I want no repeat. And I'm also going to put the top left as well, because it only wants it in the top left corner. So background position, I'm going to click on the percentage sign here and say uh, left. And on the other percentage sign, I'm going to say top. And if we look over here, it's saying the background position is left top. Control S to save. And let's go preview our page. There we go. And we can see that the picture in the background is actually on the top left corner, but my table is also in the left hand side. So it makes sense when they ask us to move it to the right hand side afterwards. OK, um, next part says to do um, H1. Actually, I'm just going to bring that back again. There we go. So we want uh, H1, 2, 3 and the paragraph style uh, to be San Francisco. OK. Or the default sorcery font. So I'm going to click over here. I'm going to add another selector. I'm going to put the H1 tag. I know the H1 tag is already there. We can, well, actually, it's not. But even if it was, I need to create a new tag right now because I'm going to group these tags together. But it's going to be H1, comma, H2, comma, H3, comma, P. Because it wants this tag to be available for all of these um, uh, heading styles and paragraphs. I'm going to come over to this side here where the properties are. I'm going to go to my text, choose the font family. I'm just going to choose one that ends in Sorn Serif just to make it easier for me. This one here is good. And just to have a quick look in case I've forgotten, I can see, for example, this text font here, Gotham, does not have speech marks. Uh, Helvetica New does because it has a space in the name. So that just gives me a quick reminder that if the font style has got a space, I need to put speech marks. So I'm just going to delete um, everything from here, from these styles here, up to uh, Sans Serif. Leave that comma there as well. And I'm going to type the fonts that it gives me. So San Francisco. Okay. And, oh, I've typed that wrong. San Francisco. And because it has a space, I need to put this in speech marks. Either side. Okay. And then if it's not San Francisco, then I'm going to put comma. It's going to be Calibri. Calibri. Now, Calibri doesn't need speech marks because it's only one word. doesn't have a space. And if it's not Calibri either, then it's going to be the default sorcery font. And that's already there for me. So that, that's perfect. This is known as efficient programming techniques because instead of writing uh, this for H1, then H2, then H3 and the paragraph, we group them together. 
okay the next part says set the paragraph style so that the text is fully justified with a 12 point font now if i have a look here i've already got the p tag so there's no point creating another p tag i'm just going to modify this p tag so i'm going to click inside this property here go to my properties i can see from here that my text here is already white because that was already done for me but what i want to do now is to make sure this is justified so here's text align justify and the font size is going to be 12 what it 12 points pt not px pt and i'm just going to change that to 12. press enter i'm going to do a quick save control s go have a look at my web page and make sure it all looks good right perfect still looking good there no errors and let's move on now it says here write align all tables in the browser window so i'm going to go to my table tag it's up here it's already here there's no point creating another one that that will be bad programming uh techniques so i'm just going to use this same tag i'm going to go to my layout option now and from the layout i want to adjust the margin so essentially what i want from here is i've got this window the table is taking up 80 percent of that window and it's sitting on the left hand side well it's actually if i go i'm opposite so it's sitting on the left hand side now on the right hand side i've got that 20 percent gap i want zero gap on the right hand side so where i've got this here the gap here on the right hand side this area here I don't want that gap here. I want the gap over to the left. So I want zero margin on the right. And the left hand side, I would just want it to automatically adjust and just use however much there is there. So as I adjust my, my window, that 20% margin gap will be on the left. So let's do that now. So for the margin, I'm going to go here. I'm going to put this to zero pixels or points. And on the left, I'm going to adjust this, click on the PX, and I'm going to put it to automatic. Now, that now should give me zero gap on the right and every, all the gap that's available on the left. Let's do Control S. And I have a look now when I refresh my screen. There we go. Now, as I adjust the size of my window, you can see that that 20% gap, although it's increasing and decreasing because my window size is increasing, this gap here, then um, the table stays on the right, but my picture stays, my background picture on the top left. So this is looking good. The only thing that I see here which is wrong, I've still got borders, although I put the borders to zero. So let's just go check our code. And if we look here, table, ah, there you go, border is one pixel. I'm gonna put that to zero. And I also want the internal grid lines, which is the TD. I'm going to turn that to zero pixels as well and control s to save and just do a quick refresh there we go borders have gone okay i need to add my name center number candidate number as a comment so from my css code here i'm just going to put and if you can't remember how to do this in dreamweaver just go to file new css code and as soon as you can see here, it gives you this gray comment area here. It's a slash star, your comment star slash, or just copy paste this over. It's entirely up to you. It's just one way to, if you can't remember that, the, the, the slash and the star, I'm going to copy that there and just replace the comment. So from here, I'm going to type my details. CY1271234 so we've done that uh right so take a screenshot to show the file name and the contents of your style sheet right so from here i've got my file name at the top here so that's absolutely fine i'm going to take a screenshot new and i'm going to take a screenshot showing that go to my evidence document i'm going to type evidence to wow that's a lot of work since i've done evidence to since i've put an evidence here there we go paste that in there now can you see that's gone to the next page fine either make this just a little bit smaller but don't make it too small if it fits it fits if it doesn't which it doesn't for me i'm just going to press enter and just bring this down to the next page 
and that's fine. You know, the idea is for the examiner to be able to see clearly your code, especially if you're comfortable and confident with your work. Okay, next part. Right, display the web page in your browser if necessary, resize it so that all the page can be seen, all the text can be easily read, the address bar is visible, the background image is fully visible. Uh, placing the evidence document screenshot showing the web page. Okay, so I'm going to go to my browser and I've already been displaying this here. So I'm, I'm going to zoom this out just a little bit there. So it takes the whole height of the page. And I'm also going to adjust the width. And can you see, as I adjust the width, I can kind of fit my entire uh, browser window there. There we go. Now I don't want to make it too big and I don't want to make it too small. Okay, so I want this to display the way it should. That's uh, a pretty good size there. And what you don't want to do is this. You don't want to take a screenshot which only displays the content like this. That will get you zero marks for this. The reason why it's not showing that you're displaying this in your web browser. So you have to take the screenshot showing the title bar as well of your browser so that it shows the URL section at the top up here. And now you can go put that in your evidence document. So I'm going to put that as evidence three. I'm going to bring this down to the next page. It's not going to fit. And paste that there. Okay, and that's perfect. It's, uh, it's clear, it's big, the text is readable. Okay, let's go to the next part. Uh, next one, display uh, the HTML source in your editor. Okay, take a copy of the HTML source. And, now, here it wants a copy of it. It's not asking for a screenshot. So I'm going to go to here. I'm going to go for evidence four. Next page. Go to Dreamweaver. I'm going to go to my web page. I'm going to display the code and I'm going to copy the entire code like this. So you just do control A, control C, control C. I'm going to go to my Word document, control V. And one thing I always ask my students to do is you can see here it's got like double line spacing. Now your ICT students, so you've done paper two already. You should know how to play around with the line spacing. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to select all of this go all the way to the bottom, hold the shift button and click here to select all of this text, go to paragraph and just make the line after to zero. It, it just makes, it puts all of your code essentially on one page, making it, and if it doesn't put it on one page, it's not spreading it over um, a, a numerous amounts of pages. So I'm just adjusting the margins there a little bit as well. There you go. And I've got everything here now on one page and it's easier to read. OK. All right. Let's go back to our question paper. OK. Task for printing the evidence document. Save and print your evidence document. Uh, make sure your name, center number, cadet number appear on every page of your evidence document. All right. So basically, it seems like we're not going to be adding anything else in the evidence document when it comes to the spreadsheet part. So we can print that off now. But if we are asked later on to add something in the evidence document, make sure you print it again, even if it doesn't tell you to. So the next step, data analysis. OK, so let's get started. So you're going to be uh, you're going to use a spreadsheet to list properties in Bali that match the location and room type entered by the user. Open and examine the files. So these two files, it's always good to have a look at these files. Uh, most most of my students, they don't bother doing that, but I think it's a good idea. So I'm just going to open up J2131 Home first. So I need to go back a folder. Here are where my files are and open that up. Now, you don't want to make any changes or if you do, you don't want to save any changes. It's very, very important that you don't do that. So I'm just going to uh, expand all these columns and just zoom that in. And this looks like a, a bit of a mess. Now, I haven't seen these uh, this paper before. so. OK, so it says here location. So I'm going to take it that these here are locations. And underneath are, oh, there you go. It's got villas here and resorts. So these are different villas and resorts for this location. So this is clearly a H lookup function. You're going to be looking up horizontally, not vertically. So this particular one's going to be used for a H lookup function, most likely. Let's close that one without saving and open the next one, which is uh, the rate one, this one here. 
Uh, yeah, and this is this is clearly a VLOOKUP uh, function. We're going to be using this to do a VLOOKUP. We're going to be looking up either the persons, the rate per, what's that, night? Rate per night or whether there's breakfast. So um, depending on what's required, we're going to choose the appropriate column number. Okay, so let's close that as well now. So we've had a look at that. And let's go back to our question paper. Okay, uh, in the spreadsheet page, row two in file J2131 home, oh, I didn't read ahead, you see, I should have done, uh, contains the location of the properties and rows three to eight contain the names of properties. Okay, so that's that's really what I identified by looking at, at that file. These files will be used to provide data for your spreadsheet and must not be changed. Okay. And that's right, and that's what I, you don't want to make these changes on, 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 that, um, on those spreadsheets, otherwise it will cause issues. Open and examine J2131 list in the spreadsheet package. So I'm going to open that one up now. Let's just read ahead this time. Data has been placed in cells B4 and B5 to help you test the model. So only data here has been added. Uh, place in the header. Okay, so I'm going to be doing things to this one. So I'm going to open up J2131 list. Uh, this is my list, quite a bit of a small list. So I'm just going to expand that and expand that a bit just so I can get a, a clearer view. Okay, so this information, B4 and B5, has been added in for me. And clearly this is going to be used to fill in things like, um, well, what the number of persons or breakfast provided, things like that. Place in the header, uh, left align the text, list prepared by colon followed by a space your name today's automated date so i'm just going to take a quick snapshot of this okay so from here i'm going to go to view and from view i'm going to go to uh, page break uh, page layout view and then from page layout view i can type here my details and that is list prepared by list pre not a capital be careful with that prepared by colon I'm type my name center number and my candidate number okay a space your name center number candidate now then the space uh, followed by on so space followed by on and today's date automated so i'm going to press space i'm going to go to the header for the ribbon here and you should be able to see current date and add that in now. Okay, uh, save this uh, as a spreadsheet with the file name that. So I'm going to go to File, Save As. I'm just going to change this from Delimited now to an Excel workbook. And this should be J2131BHH. J2131BHH underscore CY1. 127 underscore candidate number 12345 for example that okay and I'm going to click on save and there we go okay and now I can simply go back to my view and choose normal okay that's that part done I can get rid of that let's go back to the question paper Format the spreadsheet so uh, to look like this. Okay. Um, all right, so I'm going to make this look like this. I can see uh, columns A and B 50-50. Uh, so they're taking an equal proportion. So I'm just going to drag that over like that. And then bring that over like that a little bit. So I've got approximately 50-50. The first row is merged, A and B. Now there's a number of ways you can do this. Um, you can just easily from home click on merge and center and I'm going to enlarge the writing so that's going to be a black background white writing and I'm going to make that writing quite big okay oh and down here it says that um, format merge cell a1 to b1 to contain white okay uh, 28 points so that that there No, I'll put it 26, let's put it 28, perfect. Now, this here looks center aligned and it's merged. Oh, and look at number two here. You can see here that it's only showing half of the height of the row. So I'm just going to adjust that. 
So two looks like that. I'm going to select A3 to B3. I'm going to merge these together, make sure they're centered. And I'm going to, oh, it's bold as well. And the distance between the first letter and the last letter to the borders should be slightly less from what I can see. So I'm just going to do that so it looks roughly similar. There we go. That looks about right. These here look center aligned all the way down. So I'll center align those. And these ones here look center aligned as well. Now here it's got some tech, it's got some uh, results, that, 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 that. Now I, I think these are going to be things that are going to be added in automatically from, and that makes sense. We remember we've got a number of persons and whether they've got breakfast provided or not. So that kind of makes sense. I'm not going to add that information. I think those are the results I should get if I do my formulas correctly. Um, but I'm going to read through the question paper to see the rest of that. I don't think I have anything else. Um, borders are, are, are visible also. So I'm going to select this and make my borders visible. Um, so from that, there, there we go. And that looks, I'm, I'm thinking pretty good. Yep, yep. Okay, so let's move on. I'm just going to get rid of that now. And we go down to our question paper. Now, Right, enter a function in cell B7, which depending on the room type, looks up the number of persons from J the file J2131 rate. So in B7, this one here, in here, I'm just gonna zoom that in a bit more, there we go. In B7, I want a formula, which is going to look up the number of persons based on the J2131 rate. Now, the number of persons, is going to be dependent upon the room type okay because it says that depending on the room type now here's here's a mistake a lot of students do they start this off like this they start off without even checking the data first they do an equals v lookup and they've actually started the function already now the problem with that is once you go to open your file which is the rate one that i want double click on it Excel will not open that file. And the reason is you've got Excel locked in edit mode because you're working on this function. And it doesn't matter how many times you try and open that file, it's not going to open. So you have to come out of this edit mode. I'm going to press escape and look at that straight away. My file opens. So the correct way of doing this is when you're going to be using another uh, file for data, uh, then either for a function like a VLOOKUP or a HLOOKUP, make sure you open the file first. So I'm going to open that one first. There it is. Now I can just go back to my other spreadsheet. And from here, I could put in my function. So equals to. Now, what kind of function is this going to be? Well, let's have a look at it. This is the VLOOKUP. And you can see it's got a code. And persons is on column number two. Okay. So that, that's fine. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to do equals to VLOOKUP. Because it's a vertical lookup open bracket now i'm going to be looking up the room type which is b5 so b5 there is actually a relative reference i'm i'm going to need to change it to an absolute reference uh, comma now i need my table where is my lookup table well my lookup table is this one here and i only need these two columns because the lookup column is always going to be the first column and the results that I want are directly here, the number of persons. It's the second column. There's no need to select all of this here. I'm going to go back. And then I'm going to put comma. Uh, which column has the answers? Well, we saw that. It's, uh, we're going to get the answers from column number two, comma. And I want false because I want this to be an exact match. Whenever you're looking up text, it has to be an exact match. You can't do a range lookup with text. So I'm going to press enter. And there we go. Now, I'm not required to copy this down. So I don't really need to change that B5 into an absolute reference. Okay, because if I had to copy that down, then the B5 will become B6. So this would move down to here. But I'm not copying this down. So there's really no need for that. 
Okay, and then the next one, it says, um, enter a function in B8, which depending on the room type, displays where the breakfast is provided. So in here, I want to find out where the breakfast is provided. So that's going to be exactly the same function as before. I've already got my file open. So equals to VLOOKUP, open brackets. I'm looking up again this room type, comma. I'm going to select my data. Now, whether they get breakfast or not is in this column all the way down here. The lookup will always happen on the first column. So I have to choose this first column and to include this fourth one, I need to select all of these columns here. Now note, I don't need the titles. The titles have no value. They're just there for us humans to know what that data represents. So from there, I'm going to go back to, now you can actually work from up here, but I'm just gonna go here because it actually displays it bigger for you to see. So at the end of that range, uh, my table range there, is going to be column, uh, oh, comma, and which row is it? I forgot to check. So it's one, two, three, four, the fourth column, not row, column. So the answer comes from fourth column, comma, false, and close the brackets. And if you want to test it, you can actually change this value. I'm gonna put this to a, a B, and you can see that works, and you can always go back. So that's two and no. So if I go to the B, you see that's two and no. And I know that my function is working. Okay, so let's change that back to a Q, capital Q as it was. Okay, so that, that piece is done. I'm, I'm okay with that. So let's go down to the next question. Cells B10 to B15 must display that, so B10 to B15 is actually from here all the way down to here. Okay, so that's uh, this one here where they've got the corresponding numbers one to six. Okay. Uh, must display the names of all properties in the location entered in B4. So B4, the location is this one, this UBUD thing. Okay, okay, entered in B4 by the user. If there are less than six properties available in that location, cells not displaying property names should be blank. All right. Enter a formula in cell B10 that displays the first property and then replicate this formula into cells B11 to B15. Let's just go see here, this sample data here. So this was Q, uh, U, B, U, D, and I've got one, two, three, four, five locations here. So let's just go have a look at those locations. So it's Taman, Villa, Samara, one, two, three, four. Ah, okay. So because this location has got five locations, uh, five, five uh, homes, I would say, um, then those are the homes which we want to display here. And because there's only five, it, listen, one in um, that second home, third home, fourth home, fifth home, but there is no sixth home and it has to be blank. There shouldn't be anything returned here. Okay, sneaky question. I do like it, but it is sneaky, especially for students. Okay, and it doesn't look like there's too much left of this paper, to be honest, it's just printouts. So I think most of the time is going to be spent on trying to solve uh, this problem here. Um, and it's worth it, 11 marks. So this is where you're gonna spend most of your time. So don't get flustered if you, if you feel that you can't solve it straight away. It's taken me a bit of a thought process, but the way I work is, I, I, I work in um, small steps. I do the first part, and then I build on that. So what I do know is it's going to be a H lookup. I do know, however, that from here, I can return just one H lookup. So I'm just gonna start off with that, and then I'm gonna build on it. Okay, so equals to H lookup, open brackets, and we're looking up that location, comma, we're going to our table, and I want to select this because that first row, row two, is the actual name of the location. Now, let's go back. Comma. Now, I want, I can only return one value from here. I have to choose which row. So when it finds this UBUD location in this table here, which is here, when it finds that, 
which one of these am I going to return? Well, for the very first one, I want to return that one. So that's going to be column number, uh, sorry, row number two from this selection. So let's do that. So that's going to be row number two, comma, false. Okay, so if I press enter here, it should return that one. Now, that works, and I'm happy with that. But the problem is, if I, if I now take this and make B4 an absolute reference, because I want to copy this down. And because when I copy this down, I don't want this selection B4 to go to B5, B6. I'm going to make that absolute by pressing the F4 button at the top of my keyboard. Press enter. Now, if I copy this down, it's always going to give me, this makes sense. It's always going to give me the same answer. And the reason is because it's always returning the answer from row number two. So I want, as I copy down, I want this number to increment from 2 to 3 to 4 to 5. And the way you can do this, while I'm saying that, it just made sense to me. Instead of taking the number, so this number here, number 1, it goes to 2, 3, 4, 5. So these are already incrementing. So that's fine. So what I can do is, I can say, so that's in A10. I can say the increment is going to be whatever's inside a10 plus 1 because inside a10 I've got the number 1 plus 1 that will be row number 2 as I copy that down the next one is going to have the uh, the number 2 plus 1 that will be 3 and then 4 and then 5 and then 6 so there we go I think I've solved that one so if I copy this down now perfect there we go and so because this one here has got the number 3 3 plus 1 is 4, and the reason I'm, I'm doing 3 plus 1, 4, is because the first row is the location, it's the titles. I don't want to get the titles as uh, an answer, so I always want to return my results from the second row onwards. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. Okay, perfect, we've done that. Now I've got one little issue to solve here as far as this question is concerned, and that is this. If there are less than six properties available in that location, cells not displaying a property name should be blank. Now I've got an issue because this one doesn't display a property name and it gives me a zero. So obviously this has to be an if function. Um, I'm going to need to create an if function and the if function is going to be if the result of this H lookup is zero, then put nothing. Otherwise, the result should be the result of the H lookup. So, I'm going to click here. I'm going to, I'm going to use this section down here, which is a bit uh, bigger for you to see. So, I'm going to go right at the beginning of this. I'm going to start if and open brackets. And it's saying if the result of all of this equals zero, comma. Well, what should happen if that's true? Well, if it's true, I don't want it to display anything. So I'm going to put speech marks, speech marks. That would be a blank cell, comma. If it's not true and the result is not zero, well, I want to return whatever the result of this H lookup is. So I'm going to select the whole of the H lookup up to there, control C, control V, and close the brackets and press enter. Now, where did I go and add that? I added that in the wrong place, didn't I? I added that on this one down here. I should have added it up here. So I'm just going to copy upwards. There you go. So if I take that first one now, you can see that there is my function. All I did was instead of correcting my function on the first one and copying down, I corrected my function on the last one and copied up. It's the same thing. So from here, there's my function. So it says if the result of all of this equals to zero, then the answer is going to be nothing, blank. Uh, otherwise, the answer is going to be the HLOOKUP function up to here, and then close the IF function. So now, when I copy that down, obviously, 
this doesn't have a result therefore you get the blank wow that was a really interesting little problem there uh, a bit of a, a tough one for students so okay let's go to our question paper we are here right save your spreadsheet print your spreadsheet showing the formula make sure that it's in landscape row and column headings are displayed contents of all cells are uh, easily read so let's go do some printing the first thing is I want to display the formula so I'm going to go to my formula bar formulas and I'm going to click on show formulas I'm going to double click on the column a between column a and column b to adjust that to show everything make sure everything's displayed and I'm going to do the same between b and c and that's going to expand my columns so that nothing is chopped off um, I'm then going to go to File, Print. Now, I want to print this active sheet. Um, I want landscape orientation. And for scaling, I want to make sure all columns are on one page, fit all columns on one page. There you go, that fits nicely. It's got my header and footer at the top. That's perfect. I'm going to go to the page setup now. Go to Sheet and make sure I've got Row and Column headings selected as it has requested them. And you can see my Row and Columns have been added. And I can see my Row number 2 is you know, half the height, which is probably what they're looking for. So I will go ahead and print that. OK, uh, the next part of this exercise is... So that's going to be my printout too. So I've done that. Uh, print your spreadsheet showing the values. Make sure that the printout fits on a single portrait page. Row and column headings are not displayed. Contents of all cells are fully visible. So now I'm going to go back to remove my formulas from here. So remove formulas. Let me just get rid of that. And I'm going to adjust this to where it should be as before. I'm just going to click on undo. There you go and now i'm going to select this area not that i have to it all actually fits on my page uh, control p for print or file print and make sure this is portrait i want to get rid of now the the headers so sheet row and column headings get rid of that and make sure that's all visible and it is nothing is being chopped off and that will be my next printout great Let's go to question paper. Looks like it's only printouts now. This exam paper is actually finished. Uh, change the data to produce a list of properties with um, type G and Nusa Lembongan. I have no idea what that is. I'm just going to copy that in. I'm going to copy that. So I'm going to take, I'm going to make that a letter G and that I'm going to change to that and there you go you see um, it's only got five results here and the last one is blank so that's perfect and again print make sure row and column headings are not displayed contents of all cells are fully visible and can be easily read so again I will just simply do that file print it should already be set up because the previous one was again in portrait and it was exactly the same thing I will print that up as well Okay, and then we go down. What else do we have? That's it. The paper is finished. You can see this one, unlike paper two, didn't have as many things to work on. It was just the web design and it was the spreadsheet part. But there was a very difficult HLOOKUP nested uh, function inside an IF function there. And also the web design part had a lot to work with. Uh, a lot of percentages to work with, uh, little things that you had to change. You had to keep your cool because those pictures were really, really big. And you had to just be patient to carry on with the paper, follow the instructions as they are uh, listed on the paper, and it should actually work out. You do actually get quite a bit of time for this paper extra, and that allows for a lot of trial and error, especially when it comes to doing the if function and the VLOOKUP functions. Okay, if you are taking the exam, good luck to you guys. And if you want to keep up with any other new videos that I'll be uh, creating, make sure you like, make sure you subscribe, and I'll see you again in the next video. Take care.
拜。